Hello all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixie the Bug, or Danny, whichever you feel like calling me. And uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we are hanging out in Kentucky. And then I believe we have one L, and then hanging out, slipping into the M's. But today, we are hanging out in Kentucky with the Hopkinsville Goblins. I'm not going to play lo-fi beats today. I was going to... But I, I played them last time and you couldn't even hear the music, so I don't know why. I actually had it very loud and you still couldn't hear it, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to play it. And, uh, yeah, my, my desk is back to being messy, so enjoy that. So today, Kentucky, and it's gonna, it's called the Hopkinsville Encounter. So let's get into it, shall we? Try. To, I had pictures up. Where are my pictures? Nope. Let me just do it the easy way. So these guys looked like little green men. That's a Pokemon. That's Sableye right there. But uh, little little green men. That's what they look like. Sorry about that. Um. Hopkinsville Goblins, that's what they look like, little green guys. Uh, and then we have, I try to show a map. So this is Hopkinsville in Kentucky. And usually I try to slip out. Sorry, my friend's sending me messages. But uh, here it is. It's at the very end of Kentucky, right between... Kentucky and Tennessee. It's right on the border there. So that's where that guy is on the map. So if you're down in Kentucky, right down there next to Tennessee, you might might find goblins. This is a cool story. I like this one. So I, I had some other pictures up. We had home of the Goblinsville, Hopkinsville Goblins, and uh, t-shirts. They're on Amazon if you want to look at them. I'm not going to look at prices or anything. Um, here's another figure. Apparently it began on a Kentucky farm. And look, they have a cryptid card. I thought about collecting the cryptid cards for each one that I did, but I don't really want to, to be honest with you. I, I wouldn't know what to do with them. <clears throat> Excuse me, still fighting allergies. Oh, must be their... They're black in some pictures, must be. Or gray. So, this is the history place. Um, History.com slash little green men origins. Um, the 11 witnesses who arrived at the Hopkinsville police station were genu genuinely, because words, terror struck. This by Volker Jansen, January 2nd. 2020. Oh, she's the one that had the picture. Um, aliens are so often depicted as little green men with bulbous heads and oversized eyes. That's true. Um, the mythology began on the night of August 21st, 1955, when a large extended farm family called the Suttons arrived breathlessly at the Hopkinsville police station in southwestern Kentucky. <laughs> Their story of a terrifying siege by otherworldly beings would become one of the most detailed and baffling accounts of an alien close encounter on record. Notable for a large number of witnesses, there was nearly a dozen. <laughs> Excuse me. The duration of the encounter was several hours, and the close proximity between the witnesses and creatures sometimes just a few feet away. It became regional and then national news. So this became very popular. Um, the alleged encounter occurred on the Sutton's farm in the tiny rural hamlet of Kelly, Kentucky, where the family lived in an unpainted three-room house without running water, telephone, radio, TV, or books. So if they had no radio, TV, or books, they didn't... I don't want to say it, so it sounds mean. Didn't really have the imagination to make it up, really. Um, that that sounds terrible of me to say, but they weren't 
stuck in the cycle of constant things like we are today is what I mean by it. Um, the UFO landing and the appearance of small alien creatures, one fact is indisputable. When the eight adults and three children arrived at the nearby Hopkinsville police station at about 11 p.m., they were genuinely terror-struck. <clears throat> These aren't the kind of people who normally run High Twinkle to the police for help. Police Chief Russell Greenwell later told investigators. That was my little dog. <laughs> what they do is reach for their guns. Yet here they were, women and children hysterical, and one man with a pulse of 140 beats per minute, measured by an investigator. Apparently, back then, police had heart monitors. They actually had a pretty good pretty good description of them. There was no indication of sex, so they looked basically the same. The head was almost round, bald, same color as the body. They had no nose. One man stated very strongly that there was none. They had no necks. They had no necks. Okay. Knuckles and fingers not counted. The feet not seen or not noted. Hands oversized talons two or two to three inches long with webbing between the fingers starting about a knuckle above the talons. Um, so it'd be like, like that, that line, that first Wow, that's terrible. That line there. Um, a knuckle. So like right there. And then the rest of it would be talons. Which you can kind of see there. So they have like a knuckle there. And you see how it's webbed between the fingers? That's what that means. Um, the eyes were yellow, center, white rim, about six inches apart and glowing. That That's quite a... It's very descriptive. They have very, very description, descriptive notes here. So, I mean, that's quite a, that's quite a description. Okay. Nope, I can't go here because this is blocked by ad blocker stuff. This is ATI. Don't know what ATI is. It's by Marco Margaritoff and... Kalina Fraga of March 26th of 2021. Isn't it March now? Oh, last year. March of last year. So it happened on August 21st, 1955. That's two days before my birthday. That's cool. The Kelly Hopkinsville UFO incident terrified the people of Western Kentucky and introduced the world to little green men. <clears throat> Um, around 11 p.m. one August night, eight people showed up at the Hopkinsville, Kentucky police station in a state of panic. We need help, one gasped. We've been fighting them for nearly four hours. <clears throat> this one, ATI, AT, all that's interesting.com. There we go. All that's interesting.com. Uh, to this one, they're little silver men. Um, others see it. As an overreaction, perhaps fueled by moonshine. Moonshine is a type of alcohol for those who don't drink. Um, <clears throat> Today, there's a Little Green Men Days Festival every August. That's kind of cool. That would be cool to go see it. Um, <clears throat> the spaceship is drawn by Ledwith from Taylor's description. So it looks like a weird flying frisbee thing while visiting a friend named elmer lucky sutton at his farmhouse in the tiny town of kelly on august 21st billy ray taylor of pennsylvania went outside to the well to collect some water then something streaking across the sky caught his attention taylor later described the silvery object as real bright with an exhaust all the colors of the rainbow that's basically what we have, what you see sometimes in cartoons and stuff. Silvery object that's bright with the circular thing being all different colors. Um, 
Taylor also recalled that he hadn't heard an explosion, just a hissing noise as the object landed somewhere behind the farmhouse. But no one took Taylor seriously until the dogs began to bark. Someone or something was approaching the house. The terrified group later described to police what they saw in vivid, frightening terms. The invaders had round, oversized heads and long arms with talons that nearly touched the ground. So, that's how they had it in that history thing. Um, everything about them seemed to shimmer and glow in the darkness. Their eyes had yellowish light, and their bodies glinted like they were made of silver metal, and they were getting closer. But those gathered at the Sutton farmhouse weren't going to go down without a fight. Sutton and Taylor grabbed guns. When one of the creatures pressed its face against the window, they started to fire. So they didn't even go up and talk to them. They just, they saw one of the creatures at the window and just started to shoot. So... To be fair, if you're sitting somewhere and you're starting to get shot at, your natural reaction is probably to shoot back um, or try to defend yourself. So they, they technically, the humans started it, guys, in this alien scenario. Um, over the next few hours, the aliens drew close and then retreated. They flipped up into the trees when the humans tried to shoot them. One reached down and grabbed Taylor's hair. Finally, when all seemed quiet, several people piled into a car and fled into town to beg the police for help. Four city police, including the chief of police, Russell Greenwell, drove out to the Sutton farmhouse to see what had happened. Aliens or not, the crowd at the police station had seemed genuinely terrified. Um... But police didn't find any obvious evidence of little silver men, so they didn't find anything. Um, as noted in the Kentucky New Era the next day, which would be August 22nd, nothing stirred during the investigation, besides one of the officers accidentally stepping on a cat's tail. In the darkness outside the house, no further excitement ensued, so they didn't find anything. Other than a cat, apparently. <laughs> I think I, I think the whole story is entirely plausible due to still the Kentucky New Era. I know I saw the saucers. If I saw them, the Kelly story could certainly be true. Okay. There's... Oh, they actually have. This is cool. Certified true copy from the first lieutenant that went there. On August 22nd, 55. That is cool. It's handwritten. This one's typed. My name is blank, age 50, and I live at blank Hopkinsville. I'm not going to read his thing. On Sunday night, August 21st, about 10.30 p.m. Somebody said 11, but no. 11 was when they, when they walked into the police station. That doesn't make sense. Because this says 10.30 was when it started. So if they were fighting it for up to four hours before they showed up, it would be like 2.30 in the morning before they got to the police station. But anyway, I was walking through the hallway, which is located in the middle of my house, and looked out the back door, which is south, I guess, and saw a bright silver object about two and a half feet tall appearing round. I became excited and did not look at it long enough to see if it had any eyes or move. I was about 15 or 20 feet from it. I fell backward and then was carried into the bedroom. Carried into the bedroom? Why? My two sons, his wife, and his wife, and their friends, and his wife. <laughs> Very descriptive. And actually, they're, most of it's just blinked out. So I, I can't tell you their names. We're all in the house and saw this little man that looked like a monkey. About 3.30 in the morning, I was in my bedroom and looked out the north window and saw a small silver shining object about two and a half feet tall that had its hands on the screen looking in. I called for my sons and they shot at it and it left. I was about 60 feet from it this time. I did not see it anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. I have read the above statement and it is true to the best 
of my knowledge and belief. It's cool that they had the the actual copy of what happened. Um, <clears throat> the validity of the Kelly Hopkins phone counter was questioned immediately. Some people doubted the honesty of the Suttons, and neighbors dismissed the whole affair as drunk and typical and the result of too much moonshine. Um, they said we were drinking, but Langford knew what she had seen. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> but then it says even police who responded to the scene agreed that it didn't appear that anyone had been drinking. So this is, I've done this. I've done this one completely Kentucky wiki, but this is a wiki about cryptids. I've, I've been on here. <laughs> here we go. We had Elmer Lucky Sutton, John Charlie J.C. Sutton, and their respective wives, Vera and Aline, Aline's brother, O.P. Baker, and Billy Ray Taylor and his wife, June. So they were they were the ones that were in that incident, but they had blacked it out on the on the thing. So interesting. Psychologists Rodney Schmaltz and Scott Lillianfield Lillianfeld cite the alleged incident as an example of pseudoscience and an extraordinary claim to help students develop critical thinking skills. <laughs> Um, so we have this one too. I don't know. A Hopkinsville alien tale has inspired a yearly festival of musical and Pokemon. This is from the WKMS. It says Murray, Murray State's NPR station. But I, I find that hard to believe. I don't believe that Pokemon was inspired by an alien story. The annual Little Green Men's Day Festival, I would agree with. Um, oh yeah, okay. Remember how I showed you Sableye, which is this guy right here? It says right here in the WKMS website, according to video game website Games Radar, the alien's distinctive appearance also inspired the design of a Pokemon called Sableye. So remember how I said it looks kind of like Sableye? And then that one is Sableye? Yeah. That's an interesting one. That's cool. So then we have our typical thing. Um, this is by KPRC to Click to Houston. That's only two minutes. <laughs> Geraldine Sutton Stith and Elmer Sutton say what their father's claim of an alien encounter in Kelly, Kentucky. The attention came pouring in. Articles reported claims of a spaceship, of little men. Dad did not like the attention of his broad. After everybody laughing at family, ridiculing the family, he didn't want to talk about it. He said, no good can come of this story. He said, we need to let it go. It was 1955. The family property was sold two weeks later. Lucky Sutton really spoke about the story the rest of his life. I don't make fun of him, you know, say, oh, it's a hoax, just to get attention. My dad wouldn't like that. Then, a few years ago, it became known this area would be the primary viewing destination of the great American solar eclipse. The date of the eclipse, August 21st, is the exact same date as the Sutton family story from 1955. People are scared oh. to death that they're going to come back during the eclipse. And, well, they, who knows? I'll tell you this, well, uh, my dad ran them off the first time. I believe I can run them off the second time. <laughs> <laughs> In 62 years, the culture's developed around Kelly. It's incredible. The people that have embraced it, love it, believe it. Our story is getting up there with Roswell. This year's <laughs> Somebody in a mask. I thought it was a little... ...happened alongside the eclipse. A story her father hated 
Geraldine's not sure what he'd make of what it's become. I got to believe maybe he has embraced it wherever he's at and he's okay with it. We weren't in the picture there. But Geraldine and Elmer say they're glad to share that story Just of a normal my place. Finger, a sorry. normal man. And that August night that changed everything. So that's, that's look at the pep, salt and pepper shaker. I thought that was neat. Just looking at that alone is cool. So you got to see a little bit of the festival. This one's eight minutes. I don't know if we'll listen to it. This is from Dread Central. Um, the Dread, the Unsolved, looks into a reported alien siege in Hopkinsville, Kentucky that had the whole town crying goblin. Here's a new one. Somebody two months ago wrote, called the Git Gitologist, wrote famed psychic medium Edgar Case was also from Hopkinsville. That's kind of cool. A modest-sized city sitting at just over 30,000 residents, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, is a quiet southern town like any other. Perhaps the strange part is the bowling balls. 60% of all bowling balls made came from Hopkinsville until a factory making them shut down in 2019. That's cool. No, things in Hopkinsville Who knew that? today are unassuming. The 1978 film Attack of the Killer Tomatoes stated that Hopkinsville was once besieged by millions of irate birds, but that's not true. Death by what birds. What actually happened in Hopkinsville in Kelly, Kentucky is of keen interest to ufologists, professional debunkers, and of course, me. Oh, he's in Kentucky. Cool. I'm not going to go further than that, I don't think. We've seen it. So the last thing that I usually do on my channel is go through Facebook and show you if there's anything that we can find. So there's um, Bo Patrick Carrington, the UFO Files group, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, Kentucky Mysteries, Kentucky Goblins, Hoax are Real. This is from Salem Edison. Apparently she has one too. I didn't find her on the YouTube thing, even though that's a YouTube link there. So if you want to watch it, there you go. Um... The Night of the Kentucky Goblins. The Haunted History of Kentucky would be a cool group. That's from Delania Roberts. Random Pokemon. I love Dratini. Look how cute that Dratini is. Oh, it's available for pre-order. We're going to look at it when I'm done. Um, they have a cool picture of them right there. This is from Nate Hewitt and Dahlia Monroe. Uh, just dropped the second episode of Wrestling with the Abnormal and Paranormal. Available on Spotify, Anchor, and iTunes. That's kind of a creepy picture. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting warm, so the motorcycles are out. It's only 65 here. Uh, share, like, comment. This is from Sofa King Podcast. Um, it's called the Hopkinsville Goblins Podcast. Wonderful. It's crazy, man. Oh, you have a regular weapon? We got energy weapons. Right. <laughs> like, now it's starting to get crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. That's some fringe. Shit. There's some doofenshmirtz guy with a ball bearing and a giant <laughs> funnel. All. My Siganator 2000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funnel. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it's just one of those big gumball machines. <laughs> you know, the fucking. Yeah. I'm making a dog poop. <laughs> okay. If you want to finish watching it, you can. It's on Facebook. I just put in. Kentucky Hopkinsville Goblins and it's by Sofa King Podcast. They don't seem like it just seemed like a bunch of people laughing and making silly jokes. No offense to them. Just not what I expected. Um, I got a lot of my stuff from Real Haunted America. So if you see some pop up it might have come from these guys. Real Haunted America. And I got some of my ideas from their list. So there's there's a lot of cool things on here. Feel free to come check it out. It's just, is that a noose? What in the world is that? Looks like a noose made out of wire. So anyway, that's the end of Facebook. That's the end of the episode. Um, feel free to click like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to hang around. 
Hit the little bell if you want to get all the notifications. You can hang out with us for the rest of the country. We just finished Kentucky, and the next one is Louisiana, and we're going to be hanging out in the... I'm going to slaughter that. Roo guru loop guru And there's an idea of what we're going to be coming up with soon. So those are upcoming episodes. Yeah, see my inspector moose? That was from that, that map there. So... Kentucky, uh, Louisiana next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next week. Bye!